Welcome to Electra Online. It is now assumed that in order to have life or life to exist, you must have water. And we'll get into more detail as why that is true. Yes, there are theories and there are assumptions that maybe there's some other liquid that could replace water and function as water in, within life. But I wouldn't think of what else that substance could be and I don't think anybody can come up with a good replacement of water because water is so unique in so many ways. And then there was a time that we thought that water was actually pretty rare in the universe and that it was a miracle that we have so much of it on the earth and apparently nowhere else. Our early investigation of our nearby neighbors like Mars and, and Venus made it seem like there was really no water on those planets. Well now we know that is not the case. We have found substantial evidence that there's water on Mars, still in mostly frozen state, and some within the, below the surface there's some liquid water, but we also have evidence that there must have been vast oceans of water on Mars once upon a time. And then also we now find that most of the moons in the outer solar system contain a significant amount of water, and we've we found some moons such as Enceladus and Dion that have actually water volcanoes that spew water out like volcanoes, from volcanoes I should say. And so we know that there's a lot of water in the solar system. And then if we go further out and we look at the dwarf planets, many of those are made of substantial amount of water. For example, Pluto is now known to have mountains made out of water ice. And so therefore we realize that water is actually a quite common substance in our solar system and presumably in the entire universe. But when the Earth was first formed four and a half billion years ago, there was virtually no water on the Earth. So where did it all come from? Because it turns out if we take all the water from all the oceans and all the rivers and the lakes and on the ice in Antarctica and we put it all together into a sphere, the diameter of that sphere would be 860 miles or 1380 kilometers. That is an enormous amount of water. So if the Earth didn't have any water four and a half billion years ago, or maybe just a small amount of it, where did it all come from? Well, it turns out as the Sun first formed, and it was a protostar, it was a much larger star than it is today, because stars first, as they formed, they're larger, then the gravity caused them to shrink, and then the radiation then stabilizes their size. But during that early stage, there was a lot of radiation coming from that protostar, heating up the inner solar system. Water, of course, boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and then there's no pressure, it boils at a much lower temperature, near zero degrees Celsius, and so therefore, water would then be turned into vapor, and then the radiation would drive that water vapor away from the inner solar system until it got cold enough, far enough away, where the, where the water vapor would then turn into ice. That's called the frost line, and that frost line was well beyond where the terrestrial planets existed. So in the early formation of the solar system, before the planets were formed, all that water was driven to the far regions of the solar system. And that's why the moons that are formed around the uh, gas planets in the outer solar system contain so much of that water. And of course, we have beyond that, we have the copper belt that contains all of the, uh, the, the, um, the minor planets. And then we have the Oort cloud, which contains just billions and um, billions of uh, what we'd call dirty snowballs or comets or comet particles and that's where all the water was driven to. Now how did it come back to the inner solar system? Well it turns out that because of gravitational interaction inside the copper belt and the Oort cloud, well because some of that sometimes one of those particles or one of those clumps of ice would get pushed out and they would come then racing into the inner solar system around the sun and back out and those of course are comets. The comets typically look like this as they go around the sun. They always have a tail that points away from the sun because of the radiation pressure of the sun and then it would go back into the distance and come back. But then of course once in a while one of those comets would then impact one of the planets and of course, none of the planets were exempt from, that, from those collisions, Earth included. Of course, Jupiter being the biggest planet in the solar system probably had the most impacts of any of the planets. But enough of these comets came in and crashed into the Earth. Remember in 1908, we had one of them crash into the Earth in, in Siberia, and this is an ongoing process. But in the early period, as we call it, in the heavy bombardment, the first 100, 200 billion years of the existence of the Earth, 
hundreds of millions of comets came in, streaming in, and many of those impacted the Earth, slowly building up the water supply, not only of the Earth, but of Mars, because we know Mars had oceans, and presumably Venus probably had oceans as well. The reason why we can say that is because on Mercury, we have found quite a bit of evidence of ice still being contained within the craters near the North Pole and the South Pole of the planet, because Mercury doesn't have much of a tilt, and so the solar rays can never reach that ice inside those craters, and therefore we presume that Mar uh, Mercury also had tremendous amount of impacts, and wherever the the planet, the, the location of the ice was protected from the solar sun because, of course, in the sun during the daytime, it's like 800 degrees Fahrenheit uh, on Mercury. Uh, if it was protected from the sun rays, the ice could remain there for millions and even billions of years, which is probably what happened. And so we know that all terrestrial planets had a lot of water on them. Of course, Mercury having no atmosphere, the water mostly escaped, and M Mars having a very then use atmosphere, very thin atmosphere, most of that water has of course been lost as well uh, to, to space. And only Earth was able to contain its water and maintain oceans of water on the Earth. Venus of course got way too hot and somehow the oceans boiled away and it wasn't able to hang on to its water. So again, water is ubiquitous in the universe, but getting it onto a terrestrial planet is another story. And again, it's amazing, the miracle of our existence depended upon the ability for all that water to come back after it was driven out of the inner solar system, turned into ice, and then comets brought it all back to the Earth so that we now have oceans, enough water to make a sphere 860 miles across. So that is why we have water around the Earth. Hmm. And here's our new little kitten. And our little kitten has grown. There she is. She was only four weeks old when we first got her, but uh, that's what she looks like now. She's quite a terror around the house, but very, very sweet.